What did you hear, sister? What did you hear? Yes, an old podcast. Not plumb, but well made. Oh, you must be listening to this episode of the Retro Rewind Podcast. Reflux capacitor, fluxing, crew to stations. Scanning for Clash of the Titans, 1981. Prepare to rewind in three, two, one. Welcome, Rewinders, and new listeners to the Retro Rewind Podcast, where we take a fresh look at movies and games from 15 or more years ago. I'm your captain of the pod, Francisco Ruiz, and I'm joined by your XO and mine, Paul, the ma- Master Interrupter of Powers. I was about to say Mr. Interrupter Powers, but I guess that could be applicable You know as well. what? Just release the Kraken and get on with it. <sighs> also, for this discussion of the film Clash of the Titans, we welcome back aboard movie reviewer, the Dapper Man on YouTube. Our guest, Kevin Joshua Burnham. Hey, Kevin. Hey, what's up, mates? What's up? Or uh, mates. I'm sorry. I'm talking to both of you now. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, <laughs> now that you have a quick flyby of who we are, Paul, can you give us a quick overview of the production specs for Clash of the Titans? 1981's Clash of the Titans. Wait, what? Oh, you, do, you, you don't want what? Remember the Titans? Oh, <laughs> well, no, I don't want Remember the Titans. Oh, because we, we already covered that Exactly. Movie. We covered that Oh, movie. okay. All right. Well, do you remember Clash of the Titans was released on June 12th, 1981? It runs an hour and 58 minutes and was rated PG. It was directed by Desmond Davis, if you can remember that. Everyone remembers Harry Housen, but not the director or the main <laughs> stars. Or the, who was written by Beverly Cross. Maybe didn't know that. But mm. you may remember Lawrence Olivier, mm. the greatest actor who ever lived, according to some. I was going to say, Hamlin. really? <laughs> And Claire Bloom. So mm. that's her name. Okay. And <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> the music was composed by Lawrence Rosenthal. Mm-hmm. All right. You Clash what, of the Titans. I was going to say, you know what else ahead. he composed? Um, his composure when he met the... Uh... And it is something that man was not meant to decide. Did he really? Yeah. Young Indiana Jones theme. He... <laughs> that's actually very similar. It to is, this. right? Yes. That's cool. Yeah. All right, right, you guys ready for the box office game? Uh, I'm ready. Kevin, are you ready? Sure. All right, chat. uh, If you want to chime in with whatever number you aligns with what Paul's about to say, go for it. Go for it, Paul. All right, Clash of the Titans, 1981, was made for about ten million dollars, give or take a few. Ten million, and earned over forty-four million dollars at the box office. Not too bad for eighty-one, I'd say. Yes. Now, given this and the fact that it's in the top 50 of all-time worldwide box office films, non-inflated, based upon a folklore uh, legend, fairy tale kind of movie. So, oh, okay. okay. Um, like Frozen is based off of, uh, you know, Hans uh, Christian Andersen, okay. that, that kind of thing. Okay, okay. So. I don't think the the numbers beat Frozen, but it is in the top 50. How high do you think Clash of the Titans 1981 ranks among the top 50 movies based on a folk tale, legend, or fairy tale movie? Huh. Okay. Kevin, what do you think? Um, 13. 13. Wow. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Chat. Okay. We got uh, Ashley thinks 34. Bobo thinks 42. Dale says 30. Uh... For me, I, I I believe it's not that high, especially with current movies. Oh, Tomato says forty one. Yeah, I'm leaning down low too. I you know what I'm. <laughs> I'm go gonna, for fifty. I'm gonna go for fifty. <laughs> <laughs> not to fifty. The, an- <laughs> the answer is forty seven. So Francisco 40. wins with fifty. Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh. Second, what was number one? I'm just curious. Frozen, Frozen two. Oh my gosh! Wait, what? Huh? Frozen two. Frozen two. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> Frozen one, I hate that which movie. was number two. So one is two, and two is one. I, I, okay, just to extend this a little bit longer, was Legend on the list at all? Ridley Scott's Legend. You know, I was wondering that myself. With Top Gun I don't himself, think so. what? or Willow? Oh, Willow. Uh, well, no, I don't think Willow's based li- on any. Any yeah, folklore. It's 
it's based let's on the put book it this way. I saw Mass no. by George Lucas. <laughs> legend is not. I'll tell you what. Though I guess um, legend isn't a folklore, really. That's made up for exactly a movie. Okay. Anyway, yeah. well, cool beans nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, thank you for those factoids, Paul. And let's see if any of them factor into our memory mind meld or our subsequent roundtable discussion, which we will get into once Alice has located our target film. Alert! Alert! Approaching target. Spoilers are coming. Establishing analysis vector. MGM presents Clash of the Titans. Join the warrior Perseus on his odyssey through a magical world of wonders. Meet Andromeda, the princess he loves. Pegasus, his magnificent winged stallion. Rupo, the mechanical owl. The evil Calabos. Medusa, the Stygian witches. And the most terrifying monster of all. Clash of the Titans. Rated PG. Experience the fat... Starts Friday at a theater near you. Experience the what now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I can't wait to see it in a in a theater yeah, near me Friday. on Friday. Exactly. Hey, well, the way things are going, every old movie's going back into theater. So hey, that's, that's true. Right. That's true. <laughs> so that commercial definitely brings back some memories about Clash of the Titans. But to give you some context for the things we collectively remembered most before our rewatch, here is your memory mind melt synopsis for Clash of the Titans. Zeus releases the Kraken to show he can. <laughs> Uh, so then, Big Daddy Zeus decides to punish Calibos by giving him a fate worse than death. He turned him into a stop-motion monster, which caused Ray Harryhausen to quit making movies. Uh, per per Perkius Perkius makes Zeus mad. Zeus makes Zeus mad just by being alive. So the penguin gives him magical weapons. Perkius. Rescues Professor McGonagall's daughter from the Devil's Cage with the help of Pegasus. So the old lady from Downton Abbey tells her plan to the other goddesses that actual caused the first Bond girl to say only one line and cash in millions of dollars. <laughs> Percy and the Olympians hunt Medusa to save the city from the Kraken. Perseus uses Medusa's head to turn Kraken into stone and marries girl. That was just so all over the place. Definitely. <laughs> Decepted. Yes, Percy. I know it's Perseus, but in the notes, tomato, it's Perkeus. So I'm going to say it like the notes say. Based on those memories, flawed as they were, what rating did they lead you to predict for Clash of the Titans before you rewatched it? Uh, classic, nostalgic, or tragic? Kevin, what was your predictive rating? My predictive rating was classic. Classic for Paul? Mm -hmm. I enjoyed this movie as a kid. Um, in fact, I, I, I don't, this is going back old school. I remember, um, I don't know if anyone else remembers, but back in the day, the TV used to um, host these movies on on TV, and we would eat dinner as a family sometimes and watch. Sometimes they split the movie up into two nights. It was long. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I enjoyed this movie as a kid, but as I got older, the more and more people I talked to um, didn't seem to enjoy it as much, so I predicted nostalgic. Nostalgic, I see. I'm kicking it old school because you went old school. I hope you're happy now. I see. I remember watching this on the... I remember watching this all the time on the television, and it was not edited. Oh, really? Oh, oh wow. So nice. there are certain things in this movie you're like, wait, what? And my father was like, turn your head, turn your head. Exactly, your head. exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> like cutting off Medusa's uh, head. I mean, you really want to, can't look at that. So nostalgic for Paul was his prediction. And for me, I, I said classic as well, because I, I'm... Uh, I usually like like sword and sandal type epics and mythology fantasy. So I'm like, yeah, and I remember liking this. So we'll go, I predicted classic. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see if any of those predictions came true. But first, let's get into our discussion of the things we liked most about Clash of the Titans. Let's spin up our... Best three. Best three indeed. So let's start with our guests as we'd like to. Kevin, the Dapper Man, what is one thing you liked about Clash of the Titans? I know I'm going to steal some people from this, but that's okay. It's mine. Um, yeah. A special Own effects it. by Ray Harryhausen. Nah, who would like oh, those? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Who would like that? I was just massively still always impressed by Ray Harryhausen and the things he does. And this one, mm -hmm. his last film. And I really Oh, this was his last one? Motion effect. 
This was his last movie he did. And this was the only movie he okay. did. He actually had a crew on board with him to help with the special effects. Oh, wow. Okay. See, all the other times, whenever they made special effects, it was just him by himself. Which wow. is one of the reasons why you had the two dog animal, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. was yeah. two headed dog. And Greek mythology is a three headed dog. Mm-hmm. But Cerberus, yeah. they knew how much time he took, and it was like, no, we're just going to have to cut this time. Just make it two heads. And exactly. Like, oh, wow. Exactly. It's still pretty impressive. And you can always tell whenever his special effects is on screen compared to the other special effects that were on screen. <laughs> I mean, you can oh. tell it's like night and day. <laughs> well, yeah, we might you talk should about be embarrassed that. By that. Yeah, you shouldn't be embarrassed by that. Like, this, he's probably more well known. This movie's probably more well known for his work on it than anybody else's work. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yes. Totally. Though I, I'm trying to think of the other movies I've seen of that are his, because I thought most of the other movies I've seen that are his came after this, but I, Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. I haven't seen, that, haven't uh, seen Jason, Jason and the Argonauts. And Argonauts. Mm-hmm. Um, um, a lot yeah, of the Sinbad I, movies. Um, I just actually reviewed two of his movies on my channel. And oh, okay, that was cool. Earth versus the Flying Saucers. Oh, wow. Okay. And it came from Beneath the Sea. Oh, uh-huh. nice. Okay. There you go. Stop so there's a whole list for you. All right. I'll, I'll get right <laughs> on that after this. Uh, <laughs> okay. So the special effects. Uh, Paul, were the Ray Harryhausen effects, a uh, creature effects, something you really gravitated towards, or was there something else you liked? Um, I'm going to go a different direction, and mm-hmm. like Kevin, I'm going to make this, now this is my own, a lot of people will disagree with me on this one. Ooh, okay. Um, a lot Conflict. of Conflict, yes. I love but, it. Yes. And, and I'm going to lose a lot of audience members uh, on this, but me, pauljpowers.com, <laughs> I really like Bubo the Mechanical Owl. Why is that bad? I, <laughs> why is that bad? Because a lot of people I've talked to hate him. In fact, what? they what they if you ever seen the remake of of this, uh, there are people who are desperately trying not to have Bubo in the second in the remake of this. Yeah. But I think the director insisted. So the the actor, um, I forget his name, um, just he he refused to work with him, but gave him one scene where he threw the owl away. Uh, but. I love the owl because, look, the people that don't like the owl, I can understand. If you're an adult and the first time you're seeing this, it's kind of cheesy. Okay, okay yes, look, I'll give you that. But it's I, so beautifully this, done. Oh, my yes, gosh. Yes, I saw this as a kid, and I, I think it's great use of imagination and mm-hmm. the mechanics behind it mm-hmm. all. I think it, it's a fun, lovable little character. Some people yeah. find it annoying, beeps and boops, like a knockoff R2-D2. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. But, Which it was. That was the reason but, why they did it, because it was making so much yes. money. It's like, that's what people want. <laughs> yes. The same thing, only different. We right. need to add droids exactly. to this sort of sandal epic. Yes. But yeah, I, um, I, I'm with yeah, you, Yeah, but I, I think, like it. Yeah. I, I like the design behind it. Yes. I thought it was a fun. And and people who don't, who we saw it as a kid and still don't like it, then you're just, a, you just, sorry, but you're lacking that imagination that you had as a child, that it captures that fantasy that this movie is made for. I mean, I think the only thing I would, I would be dismissive about is that I feel like when it is stop motion owl, when you have that comparison to the live action owl that looks just like so well made and it has cool articulation and motion and then you get yeah. to the stop motion it's like very like oh this is not nearly as nice looking so whereas some of the creatures uh like the the two headed dog the cerberus you don't really get this like live action version there's only the stop motion so you don't have that comparison to make in your mind um yeah. so that's the only issue i have with the owl but yeah, I don't have any other. I, I'm curious, Kevin, you've been sort of silent. Do you like the owl? Do you not like the owl? How do you feel oh, about it? Oh, I absolutely love the owl. Okay, all right. Yes. <laughs> I, I love the owl. And that was the Team main, that was like one of the main characters I always um, came to like yeah. recognizing. Whenever I see this movie, because whenever I see Clash of Titans, I naturally think of Bubble the Owl yeah. and like yes. two others. But that's the main thing. And that's what I believe what draws audience inside because it's just that – level of imagination the visual aspect exactly and i as as i can agree with you francisco whenever you look at the difference between the stop motion and the live action you see the more fluent flow to it Mm -hmm. compared Mm -hmm. to maybe not as fluent as stop motion yeah but it's still massively impressive for its time and for what he has done yeah because with every single time he does the flap he had to change the lighting because you you know stop motion takes tremendous hours of work put into it totally but there's still a nice 
lovely flow that happens when it's live action. Absolutely. So much fact, better than CGI. So much for... better than CGI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if someone's looking for a uh, early or late Christmas present for me, if you want to get a life-size replica <laughs> of Boobo the mechanical owl that like turns and stuff, it doesn't have to boop and beep, but you know, that would be so awesome. That would I'm gonna, be awesome. I'm going to tell you, there there was an art place I went to when I was in Nevada. It's actually out there in California. It was like it was it was a art gallery thing where they actually weld metal if i see it i would personally email you it but yeah they had bubble the owl and i think it was oh, like two wow. dollars but this guy welded it and you could turn the head with your hand oh you know, like no nice. wind up but you could turn the head and i thought that was so amazing yeah yes. now, i wasn't totally. out in california like three years ago but yeah oh when man. i saw that i thought it was like clash the titans and someone was like what I was like, okay. oh, oh, why am i talking to you <laughs> right <laughs> That's why Get they're not face. on this podcast. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, man, person we don't know. You could have been on this podcast, but no, you don't know yeah. Bobo the Owl. Bobo, yeah. Bobo, whatever his name is, Bobo. Bobo, right? Is it Bobo the Bobo. Owl? Bobo the Owl. Okay. Anyway, moving on to well, something. At least the subtitles I had said Bobo. All right, Bobo. fine. Um, that sort of leads into something I liked, which was just all the cool creatures we get to see in this from... From yeah. Bubo to Pegasus, Medusa, the Cerberus, not really Cerberus. Uh, I, just so many uh, Calibos. I, I, yeah, there's just so many things, so many different creatures in this that I feel like a lot of the time in movies you sort of get like two uh, banner creatures that you focus. Oh, the Kraken, another one. Two banner yeah, creatures that you focus Kraken on. Kraken and Pegasus. And yeah. That's it. That, that Most movies, I think that'd be it. But that they just keep like busting out all these unique creatures. That's yeah. The witches. I yeah. I just really loved everything they, they poured into this from creature and character standpoint. That was really that interesting. That was actually my second like. Oh, I wrote okay. down characters nice. and creatures. Just the variety mm -hmm. and, and, and how well they played against off each other. I mean, you even had a giant vulture. There was even a place oh, for yeah, that. Oh, yeah, the vulture. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, quick quick question, guys. So so Andromeda, her like, I don't know. Uh, oh, this is weird. What did you call it? Yeah, yeah, her astral projection goes out into the cage. So, so is that her spirit or is that like a dream yeah, or well, what I'm, is that? I'm wondering, do you think the, the vulture and the cage are also like uh, like not really there? They're sort of spirit. But the, I guess no, I guess that can't be right because Perseus can see them. Yeah, but how can she get in that? Like, how can it float away in the cage? Yeah. It's all magical, mystical. Yeah. I was wondering the same thing. I, I don't it's know. It's Greek mythology, so you're able to blend in the I, spiritual realm with the physical realm. I suppose. Yeah. I mean, after so all, it is spiritual. Zeus went it's not down and got someone pregnant. True. So take that for what you want. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Kevin, let's go back to you. What's something else you liked about uh, uh, Clash of the Titans? I believe I just um, Paul just already said what my second one was. Oh, the creatures yeah. and characters. The creatures and characters. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely loved it. I was, I, my higher part of the list is Calibus. The makeup job on him mm -hmm. was oh. absolutely brilliant. I mm -hmm. mean, yeah. I watched it on my DVD and mm -hmm. I watched it on my Blu-ray. Ooh, there I you go. I could tell when I zoomed in on with the Blu-ray Blu of the makeup, you could see how well detailed it was mm -hmm. much mm -hmm. better than the witches. I did not care for the witch. Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Because you can tell like, there was like, okay, they just, whoever did that, just like slap something on, just put powder, <laughs> put a wee bit yeah. of oil paint and you get, and it was good to go. We but have these left over from wizard of Oz. Let's just use those. <laughs> yes. But when you see Calibus and I zoomed in, you could see that, um, the intense amount of hours that was put into that. So that was mm -hmm. my favorite of those characters. Mm -hmm. And my least favorite was the witch. I just said, but I still like them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. So that guys. was my second right there because well, I like a meter of all the different characters. Yeah. Kraken was actually not my most favorite of the of the, of the characters. Yeah, that was like my yeah. middle. Still yeah. loved it. Yeah, yeah. I still loved it, but it was still in that middle compare. And I think Calibus was my favorite, along yeah. with the Owl. Owl was like number two because the mechanics of it. Sure. I mean, yeah. and we'll talk a bit more about the Kraken, and maybe maybe there's a, a reason. Uh, that wasn't maybe your favorite, but uh, let's go into my last like before we get to classic makers, and that's 
the I I really enjoy this trope that's in a lot of like adventure and fantasy movies. Oh, um, the love triangle. I know how you love those. Between <laughs> Calibus and Andromeda and Percy. You can this. bite me right now, Paul. Seriously. <laughs> you know that's and not for it. all you playing Retro Rewind podcast bingo, you can cross <laughs> off bite me. <laughs> Don't make that a thing. Okay. No, what I <laughs> what I what I really enjoyed is the trope of like the hero or heroine sometimes maybe gain these magic items that they can use on their quest. So I, I really liked oh, that yes. Perseus gets the helmet and the shield and the sword and that those all come in handy. Uh, I wish he got to keep the, 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 the helmet though. It's always, it's always weird. He never put the helmet on all the way, just enough to make so him invisible. Come down probably. Yeah, <laughs> like the ice looks were up in his forehead. I don't know if it just didn't fit right or what exactly that was about, but, um, but I'm so sad he lost his shield. I mean, just get that. You could you could still salvage that. Just get a little above the Medusa blood, but whatever. Um, so I I enjoyed. I, I like that okay. Question, element. What happened to the helmet? I watched it like twice. It got lost it, in the bog of or the swamp. Okay, I yeah, must have, the like, swamp. It must, I must have turned my head at the perfect moment every time it happened. I kept looking like, where did I miss that he lost the helmet? Because he should have had the, the shield. Yes, that was obvious. I remember yeah, yeah. that. But the helmet, I was like, how could you not have the helmet still? What's going on? Did I miss it? That's something? how Bubo okay. came along to replace it. Okay. Oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. I missed that scene right mm-hmm. before that. Then. Yeah. I don't know how I missed it twice. Okay. Uh, no worries. There are things to miss in this, but let's not miss our classic makers, the things we loved most about Clash of the Titans. Uh, let's start. I'm going to go ahead and start because you already took mine, Dapper Man. Thanks a lot. Uh, but I'm here for you. Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Calibus's makeup. Oh my gosh, so good. And and how they uh incorporated his look in stop motion. I, I feel like even his stop motion, even though the frame rate I I, I know you, I can't expect like twenty like thirty frames per second for stop motion, but I wish there 60, was a, high frame rate, do ninety, one twenty. Yeah, I expect let's do it. Four K sixty frames 3, per second. Years. <laughs> 8 K, let's do it. Oh my gosh. Anyway, but even his stop motion, I thought was really handled really well, but his makeup just really sold it. I was so impressed. I was not expecting that level of uh, creature design, makeup to makeup effects for an eighty one movie. I, I, which is, I guess, kind of silly because the thing John Carpenter's the thing was eighty two, so, and that was way crazy. So, but what, for whatever reason, this one really impressed me. So, good yeah. job. I mean, even, to Calvin. just like like when I said when I zoomed in, I was watching when he blinked. Mm-hmm. And usually, sometimes you can see the blink, you can see the creases. Mm-hmm. I didn't see the crease of the makeup like peeling off or anything. Wow. But it still remained on. So that I just like completely blew me away. I was like, "Wow, totally. this, they really put a load of work." I wonder how many hours that man must have sat in the chair I, doing that. I don't know. <laughs> Twelve hours, yes. And they probably just filmed them in the makeup chair in some of those close-ups. <laughs> Maybe they just built the set on in Around the makeup trailer. Him. Yeah. <laughs> Now, don't blink for three hours as we fix the lighting. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see. In chat, we have uh, Dale says a classic maker is Sir Lawrence Olivier as Zeus and the goddess council. Yeah. Although there was one god, Poseidon. But uh, regardless, uh, let's go to uh, let's go to Kevin next. What was your classic maker, Kevin? My classic maker is the scene that terrified me as a child. Ooh. It always... Um, I didn't have to, I didn't have to have my mom or my dad tell me to turn my head away. I turned my head away instantly when I saw it because I was afraid I turned to stone, and that was the Medusa oh. scene. Oh, really? Because the, the the scene just I'll, I'll let you expand on that just a bit, but just what freaked me out as a child and still like I think about it sometimes is like I don't know how they did that as a kid mm. that giant statue head fall off and then her start talking. Mm-hmm. That that just freaked me out. Wait, so go ahead. Medusa, Medusa was talking. No, the um the Thetis. I don't know her name. The goddess of uh, oh, Maggie Smith. Oh, oh, when, yeah. when they're just projecting it on. Fell off. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yeah. I know I mean, now. It's just projected as an adult, on there. You know yeah. now, but as a child, yeah. it just puts in that bit of wonder. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's just the the flow of it. It's the way how it happened, and it took it from the form of mystery into a horrifying theme mm-hmm. and the music that played along with it with the snakes um just seeing the stop motion and watching the lighting and shadowing because that also another thing that impressed me yeah frame by frame. 
every light that happened because it was multiple lights. It wasn't just like one light, like light and shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a tricolor. There was the yellow. There was the red. And there mm. was like a whitish type orange. I'm sorry. Mm. Orange. And with those three colors, they blend and they smooth so well. Again, yeah. It's the stop motion of the Medusa and the snakes and just watching. Yeah. It it, it still has a bit of, of uh, trying to think like a... Wonder? Beard it puts into, oh, yeah, oh, wonder. Oh. That's what I'm oh, trying okay. to think of. The, trying to think of it. Yeah. A bit of wonder, especially when you, you watch it. You know she's going to happen. You know she's going to come out and... All of a sudden, one of the soldiers gets shot in the back with an arrow, and it makes you jump like, oh, God. <laughs> totally, yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, and then that leaves – oh, no. Yeah, that leaves Paul. What was your classic maker, Paul, for Clash of the oh. Titans? A so, titan to a titan. One of the things that impressed me, even after this rewatch, was the story. The, the plot of this is so – dense i mean there's a lot of story just in the beginning of the setup with calibus and um how he uh is on this like rampage and does whatever he wants all this bad stuff and then he always like betrothed to andromeda and how that gets all um convoluted and messed up and mm -hmm. then perseus is born and then then you have this adventure of this movie so all of this that's going on of of trying to rescue her and uh andromeda and then twice <laughs> from from calibus and from the kraken and then getting medusa and how to and all that i i just thought i was engaged the whole time is i thought it was a very well crafted story awesome okay there was a lot yeah i can i can totally see that yeah yeah for sure and yeah, i wonder I if that can, will come back Oh, what? When you said Andromeda, isn't that a name of a science fiction television show? It sounds familiar. There's the Andromeda or... Strain, which was a Michael Crichton novel, and and I think there was a TV movie. Um, and I think there was a ship named after. Okay, for some oh, reason. Maybe. And then there's the Andromeda like Galaxy. <laughs> the constant. <laughs> But, I'm just thinking of like a Gene Roddenberry on like television show. Yeah, there, there, yeah. There, there might be a ship named the Andromeda. Yeah, I think so. Wasn't that the one with Kevin Sorbo as the captain? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It had Kevin Sorbo. Her, Only back, my dad Hercules. Thought. Back to Hercules. So it <laughs> comes full <laughs> circle. Hercules. Anyway, uh, good guys. I'm glad we got so our classic maker. Greek mythology. Exactly. Exactly. Everything's Everything's intertwined. Uh, much like all our likes are intertwined with our dislikes, which we're going to get to. Oh, yeah, I think you forgot something, didn't you? <sighs> yeah. Well, you know what? There's there's so much story going on in this podcast. That I'm good. I'm I'm just going to miss something. And I did miss one more like I had. Uh, and you know what? I forgot to tell you guys, because you might say it's untold because you see it's oh, yes. the untold podcast, a speculative fiction podcast utilizing the genres of science fiction, fantasy, and horror among others in order to engage the culture's imagination from a Christian worldview. Every month, Nathan James Norman produces and narrates news, a new story presented in a unique and dramatic or dynamic way. Some of my favorite episodes are standoff of flash <laughs> fiction, but what Paul about a good cop? It's either dramatic or dynamic. It's never both. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nathan, that Paul's ruining your ad read here. Uh, a flash fiction about a good cop Get what snake you pay for. in a robotic suit, <laughs> which is episode 71, and uh, The True Light, a fairy tale about a heroine who uses her mystical light to find those lost in a deep cave. That's episode 13. Check out the Untold Podcast at untoldpodcast.com to listen and leave them a review on Apple Podcasts. Well, it's no longer untold because it's been told now, so... Yeah. Don't go down the road Paul has keeps bringing I mean, up time and time again. It's kind of obvious, but Anyhow, what does I've that have to, to do with? I'm sorry. Now, what does that have to do with Clash of the Titans? Well, they do like fantasy stories, and Clash of the Greek mythology is very much in the fan realm of the fantastic. So, I think it makes sense. I just actually just listened to his podcast just um oh, really two months ago. Oh, cool. I love every episode. Yeah, they're really see, good. I've there only listened go. to six episodes, and I'm about to—I'm just going back further and further mm -hmm. to see what I miss. And I love every single one of them. So, if you're listening to me, love your episodes, mate. Awesome, really fantastic. There you go. The Dapper Man approves of the Untold Podcast. Yes. All awesome. right. 
Uh, no more Clash of the Titans. Okay, fine. So you want so maybe maybe how about some trivia? Would that sa- satiate you about Clash of the Titans, Paul? If I knew what satiate means, yes. <laughs> oh I'm a bit thirsty. Will that cure my thirst? <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Maybe you should listen to the class while you're drinking. Oh my yes. gosh! Dun, 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 dun. Did you guys all realize, rock bands aside, that ironically none of the titans from Greek mythology appear in this movie? Uh, in nope. the mo- in Clash of the Titans, the titans are uh, the Norse kraken, or I should say, the titans in quotes are the Norse Kra- Norse kraken who never appeared in Greek mythology at all. And Medusa, who is never considered a titan in Greek mythology. So very, very strange that they made those two the titans, even though they don't yeah, they aren't really I, titans. I, when, when the witches said this time around, I, I, when she said, oh, a titan against a titan or something like that, I was like, Medusa's not a titan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, She's a, 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 a what? A maid to what's her name, according to this, who got cursed I, by I Zeus forget. or something? Anyway. I honestly forget. Though, yeah. funnily enough, um, when, uh, when Medusa's beheaded in Greek mythology, if I'm recalling this right, uh, out of her blood spawns Pegasus and I think also yeah. Cerberus, the, the three headed yes. dog. So yes. it's fascinating that they made it yeah. all wonky. This, yeah, this movie gets it all wrong. Jeez, come on, movies. Well, anyway, that's why you play the game like God of War. It kind of gets it a bit more right. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Anyway, my question to you guys is: What is your favorite creature or figure, like a a, a god, a hero, heroine, from Greek mythology? So let's. Well, I'm afraid now because I'm not to say I was like that's not Greek, that's Roman. <laughs> that's not. Well, a lot of Roman just pretty much takes from Greek, so I think you're safe, Paul. But Greek. let's start with you, Paul. What's your favorite? Mythology. I'm looking. I'm googling Greek mythology. Oh my gosh! Now. You and your Google <laughs> list of Man, well, while Paul's uh, doing that, Kevin, do you have? You know what? I will say. Oh, oh. I will say. It, it, it may be kind of childish, but I kind of enjoyed the um, the Percy Jackson novels, at least the original ones, the five. Okay, so that's not. It, I wouldn't call that a, a creature or figure from Greek mythology. Is Percy Jackson really in Greek mythology? I. I He's the son of Poseidon in the in the I'm I'm looking up a list <laughs> of Greek gods. <laughs> I could say I'm a son of Poseidon if I wanted to. That doesn't make a Greek mythology. All right, fine. Kevin, do you have one? Wait, while Paul's what's looking? that guy from <laughs> from the uh, the movie Fantasia where uh, Zeus is throwing down the light bulbs, like light, lightning bolts, and All then there's that GMI one guy bolts. hammering, making them. Is that Mars or somebody? No. Is that Roman mythology? Oh, is that Roman? <laughs> See, I told you, I this was a bad question. I don't know. Oh, it's not a bad, bad question. Que- sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, Spare sorry, my feelings, sorry. Paul. Yeah. Okay, Kevin. Anyhow, I'm going to tell you before it Paul interrupts again. Good. On um, Pegasus. <laughs> oh, Pegasus. Okay, nice. I've always liked it, especially because I guess it was like a childhood uh, memory. Every time, whenever the Muppets came on and like the Tristar and the Pegasus comes out with that triangular and yes. you know, that, theme, that song they played. Nice. So I always thought, and I always thought there was a real Pegasus, and I was jumping around looking around for like horses with wings, and I was like, where's a horse with wings? My father was like, what, what the crap you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> horses with wings. That's funny. So, All right. I have one. Okay. So since our podcast has to do with uh, reviewing movies of old and we have a time machine, mm-hmm. I'm going to say Kronos, the god of time. Ooh, very nice. Who? I think Kronos is a titan, in fact. Um, so. No, that's that's that's, that's Cro- a- Kronos, who is the father of Zeus. Yeah, geez. That's I, the no, titan. I don't yeah, know how I got Kronos. those confused. Yeah, yeah, like Side Percy eye. Jackson. I mean, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Uh, from chat, we have a couple. Enthusiast says, uh, oh, Medusa was cursed by, I think, Athena because Medusa and Poseidon got it on in her temple. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But um, let's see. Dale likes minotaurs. Minotaurs are awesome. I, I can get behind that. And uh, Enthusiast says, Hephaestus, I think. Uh, oh, Hephaestus makes the bolts of Blacksmith okay. of the Gods. Thank you, Enthusiast. Plus, hey, Paul, you've seen Hercules, Disney's Hercules. You should know plenty of Greek mythology. Hercules, Hercules. That's not the same thing. 
I'm gonna be honest, I have never watched that movie. For some reason, it just never Which the Nay Professor? Which one? It's kind of animated fun. Disney animated movie. Oh, oh, the oh, Hercules. Hercules. Oh, 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 oh. Well, instead of taking this the exact same time to watch that film, you should take that same amount of time and listen to our review of that film. Yeah, which you can uh, find over at RetroRewindPodcast.com slash 139. Okay. Those Go for it. <laughs> then then you'll know if it's even worth watching, Kevin. I mean, yeah. how else are you going to know without listening to our episodes? Anyway, <laughs> so that's your trivial question <laughs> this time. Oh, great trivia, Francisco. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Wait, um, what, what was yours, Francisco? Did I just miss it? No, you know, I don't usually, unless someone asks, I don't usually give mine. But thank you. Oh, but what's well, yours? What's yours? Yeah. Thank you, Kevin, <laughs> for asking. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> I'm I'm a fan of Hercules. I just like that character, whether it's the Kevin Sorbo edi- version, the Lou Ferrigno edition, or version, I should say, I enjoyed as a kid. Um, I think that was Lou Ferrigno. I'm pretty sure. Did he turn green when he got mad? No, but I'm pretty sure he played Hercules. (laughs) That's American mythology. Oh my (laughs) gosh, you guys. Uh, So just like that that strong man character I've always liked. So I would love to see David A.R. White do one of those characters. (laughs) David? There you go. I don't know who that is. I mean, I'm sure I'd probably recognize him, but I'm not. Pure flicks. Every movie of Pure Flix, he's inside of it. Oh, yes. okay, okay. Then I know. I think I know who you're talking about. That's funny. <laughs> you already got Kevin Sorbo attached. There you go. <laughs> anyway, guys. Uh, yeah, so that's mine. All right. Thank you for sharing that with us. Sure. And um, and I actually have the answer to our previous audience question, oh. which again was, if you had to recast one character from Ghostbusters with anyone, who would it be? Ooh, so you have the answer to that. That's amazing that you have an answer to a question that you ask other people for, Paul. How how do you do that voodoo that you do so well? Um I'm a cop, you idiot. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> okay, so we're gonna go to Will Decide, and you all can see. I think I'll yeah, I should do this. Uh we'll see who wins. We had three entries this time, so let's spin to see who wins this time. Wheel of the side, turn, turn, turn. Tell us who won. <laughs> yeah, something like that, Paul. So this time, <laughs> Drew of the Cellcast wins. So sorry, Dustin, your your dynasty does not start. Your winning streak is over. Yeah, I'll just, just try it Drew again. Drew comes in, boom. <laughs> oh my gosh. TKO. So congratulations, Drew. And Drew's response was, uh, I would want William Shatner to play the mayor of New York. As, oh, that would be good. That would be good. Funnily enough, Bobo also had the same response. He said William Shatner. What? Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, which, which char- which for the same character? For the same character, for... the mayor, yeah. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's so weird. And uh, and this was a good one, though. I'll read uh, Dustin's. He said, I would recast Gozer with Angelica Houston, uh, because yeah. if you saw her 1990s witches performance, uh, yeah. very creepy, evil, and gross, that would fit, so. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. But congrats, Drew. Uh, we will get you your, uh, well, yeah, we'll get you your, I was going to say, going to let Paul go, but uh, you will get a free You're going to let me go after all this time? <laughs> Our Twitch That's channel. That's it. I'm taking the Thunder Road 2, and I'm out of here. <sighs> Don't, I wouldn't oh, wait, trust that, that Paul. that caused trouble yeah, before. Exactly. Yeah, never, yeah. never. Hold on. I'm going to stay for a moment. Okay, good. Yeah, you better share some of that Patreon money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what's this? Uh, what's this uh, episode's listener oh. question, Paul? So as you may or may not know, this movie was uh, recreated re in uh, 2010, Clash of the mm-hmm. Titans. No way. As we have mentioned before. Oh, it's 2010. Um, oh, for some reason I thought it was later than that. But okay, continue. Well, there was a Wrath of the Titans after that. Oh, maybe that's, maybe that's why I'm thinking. confusing. Okay. Anyway, if they were to recreate this movie, though, not the recreation of that other. Um, anti boobo <laughs> movie. <laughs> if they were to recreate this movie today, mm-hmm. who would you cast in it? Okay, like, or for any of the characters? With, oh, okay. yeah. Who would you direct? Who would you have direct it? Okay. Ooh, that's a good one. Who would I want to direct this nowadays? Like yes. from any anyone in history to direct, or any, like, or sure, yeah, director. Oh, okay. Did okay, let's do this. Let's open. 
<laughs> oh, let's open up to any time in history. Okay. 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 So who would I rather have directed this in 1981 is the real question I think Paul is asking. I'm kidding. Uh, but for a remake, for a remake, not like for a remake re yeah. today, but you could use yeah. any director from any time. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I like that question. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, send your answers to trivia at retrorewindpodcast.com by the time we record the next episode, which if you're listening to this on the day it releases, you only have a couple days. Uh, because we're recording pretty much back to back episodes in throughout November. Uh, but you can't, you do have a shot. So send that answer in pronto. And yep. exactly. Now that we have all had some trivial fun, let's find out what memories you, our awesome rewinders, had about Clash of the Titans. Uh, first off, Michael Fraley says Ray Harryhausen was a genius. This movie was one of my favorites as a child. Years ago, I rented both the new and old Clash of the Titans and decided to watch them back to back. I made it 20 minutes into the new one before I ejected the disc and put the classic in. There you go. Why would you go you know reboot and then old one? Yeah. Yeah. That's a weird one. Yeah. I understand you completely because we rented both of them. Oh, yeah? One was at the, one was at the library mm -hmm. because the library was free. Sure. And the Clash of Titans came on DVD. Mm -hmm. And we got that. And the first thing, my father was like, what is this? <laughs> I was like, it's Clash of Titans. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And, and he looked at it. He's like, wow. They'll just do anything, won't they? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> what will make us a buck this year? Okay. <sighs> Well, turn me to stone, as Dustin Warford says. I remember talking about how I would have loved to review this movie with you guys back when we reviewed Jack the Giant Killer. <laughs> Sorry, Dustin. But on a serious note, we're glad you joined us for Jack and the Giant Killer. <laughs> Indeed, and, we are. And on a serious note, Dustin Warford continues that he says, uh, love the stop motion in this movie. Medusa, the Kraken, the giant scorpions blew me away as a kid. A bit long, but a classic in my opinion. Nathan James Norman says, Clay, glorious Clay. Movies don't have enough clay these days. <laughs> okay. Okay. Watch Walsh and, and Gromit, mate. <laughs> <laughs> there That's you a good go. point, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Wardell White says, when Super Friends would... <laughs> I loved Super Friends as a kid. Sorry, I'm one of those weird people. But hey, we didn't have a lot of options back then. But <laughs> <laughs> He goes on to say, when Super Friends would run a rerun, this movie would be a great Saturday morning treat. Future LA Law star Harry Hamlin oh, yeah. and legend Sir Lawrence Olivier star in this, at the time, cool movie with a woman with a snaky hairdo <laughs> whose blood can melt metal. <laughs> It didn't take much to impress me back then. I and I thought Reb Brown was cool as Captain America, so, you know. Oh, that old, like the 90s Captain America or something? Yeah, oh, okay. the, old, mm -hmm. the, the, the one we don't really, even as a retro reviewers, we don't talk much about. See, I remember <laughs> liking that when I saw it. Like him and his motorcycle and stuff, so, anyway. Yeah. And well, like I said, we didn't have a lot of options back then. <laughs> That's true. And finally... <laughs> Kevin Joshua Burnham. What? What? Says, the person out there name I I'll just tell you my thoughts as I read this out. Great. That's that's good, Kevin. Thanks for adding to hey. that. Since you're here. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> wow. Anyway, uh, so I don't know if any of those comments there seems to be a lot of love other than love for the no love for the new one, but a lot of love for this old one. So I don't know if any of them necessarily is into our uh, dislike section. But alas, we do have to talk about the things we didn't like about Clash of the Titans. It is time for our worst three worst three things. Uh, let's start with Paul this time. What's something you didn't like about Clash of the Titans? I didn't like that Perseus knew. How did he know that the reflection of Medusa couldn't hurt them? I wish he found that out somehow, uh, like from the witches or something. He just, oh. Here's a convenient thing that'll help us get out, mm. which I think is cool. The idea of yeah. using the shield reflection oh, totally, yeah. uh, is is great. But he just, as they're entering the cave, he says, "Use your shields as a reflection." He says that. that I don't remember him saying. Yes. That. Oh, he said that. Yeah. I remember him saying that. But he, I thought they said that you can't look into her eyes and 
Yeah, but they didn't. They didn't say anything about the reflection. Somehow he knew it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, that that was. I could see how that's weird. Conveniently dropped. Yeah. Um, oh. Something. Oh, was that it, Paul? Or did you have something else to add to that? Sorry, I said oh, and then I realized there's no need. So I'm trying to think back what you just said. It's like you know what. I don't even think that he said anything about that. I I honestly don't remember. It's almost like he just intuited that that's the what he should have done to look at her. Though he just MacGyvered it, didn't he? I don't I don't think <laughs> she does her green eye stare into the mirror, does she? No, I don't. I don't never, know. She looked right. I don't know if she has to do her green eye stare to turn people. Yeah, into stone. That's, that's, what that's, what that's what she does. That's what she. Oh no, I know, but. And then when does she... Okay, fine. Here's another <laughs> dislike just for bonus since you threw that on. Her, she's dead. Her head's cut off. How does she know when to activate it at the Kraken and when not to? Whenever like, I think it's it, whenever she makes eye contact with something. That's what initiates yeah. it. Well, it could be a cloud. <clears throat> Like when, and then he throws her head, and it's like spinning. Like all the people watching should have been turned to stone. <laughs> Magic doesn't work like that. On, Paul. If eyes locked on, but you know what? I wonder what would happen if it was a gigantic spider. Does how many eyes does a spider has to lock on in order for? That's a good point. Interesting. I don't know, uh, but to that whole uh, Medusa section, that was that sort of falls into my first dislike. And that's that falls into my first dislike. And it's mainly because I wish the fight with Medusa was a bit more cat and mouse. Like, it seemed like mm. Harry Hamlin was just hiding a lot of the time, and then he waits forever, forever. But that's ever. What's creepy about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, she was creepy. By, they already showed enough creepiness of her in snake form. They, she riled her, her snake tail, but they did it like five times or something. It, was just, it just w felt like it was extended. For a long time, and I'm not sure why. I wish there was a lot more of him hiding and or him looking at the shield and him making it say he set up a decoy, but then the decoy was like I wish the decoy thing was the last thing and like she goes for the decoy and then right away he's like on, in a different pillar and gets her. Uh, I don't know what the point of the decoy was for him to just sit there and wait for a long time. So it wasn't suspenseful enough for you. Yeah, exactly. I wish they would have taken a, a, a page out of Jurassic Park's book with the kitchen scene. The way they did that was way better. So they so, shoot her. Exactly. So <laughs> what's his name? Desmond Davis. You need to go watch Jurassic Park before you do your movies. No, you, you need a time Davis machine. <laughs> but he wasn't in 1981. So he should get a time machine, go to the future, just like 12 years. That's not that bad. And uh, it only takes like two plutonium. And then you come back, remake <laughs> this scene. So I'm just saying. All right. Just saying. Kevin, what's something you didn't like <laughs> about Clash of the Titans? <laughs> well, we're in a time machine. Why don't we just use Alice to go back and help him direct a certain way? I guess we could do that too. Is we could do that. <laughs> so you didn't like the direction? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> um, well, it's, like I said, it would be kind of the direction, but it's like the screen on screen projection. Oh, you didn't, oh, with yeah. like, with how they put like the faces on the statues and stuff. Well, no, it's not that. It's, oh, you can oh. tell when there's a different scene and they're acting in front of it because the the, the black lines. Is oh, extremely yes, evident. it's very it's, evident. I mean, it's yes. not like it's not like paper thin or something like. Okay, I can get away with that. Mm -hmm. No, this is some thick lines. Yes, and it was so evident, and you can see the projection screen in the back of it. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, they're obviously not. In Olympus or whatever else they're at, so, because you can see where they're at, or I, when there's a creature behind them, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. was not stop motion, but uh, well, there was stop motion, but there were certain scenes where there was a live action or a puppet like the mm -hmm. Kraken, and you could see that black line. Yeah. Or when they released the Kraken, you could see when he went down to pull the lever, mm -hmm. the black yeah. lines that was all along that. I was like, oh, see with yeah. with that one, I just noticed a stark di difference in coloration. Yes, Almost like when, you, when you're when you looking at animated cells like, or an animated film and like the background looks beautiful and there's all these different tones. And then the part that you can see, you know which part's going to animate because it's very like salt, yeah. very few colors. Watch out for those rocks up there. They're about to fall because <laughs> exactly. they don't match anything in the background. Yeah. Exactly. All that styrofoam that's about to hit you on the head. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was very evident for me. Yeah. Okay. So some of the, some of the way they shot the movie. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Um, then let's go back to Paul. What's something else you didn't like, Paul? 
Um, dead people moving is what I wrote down because dead after they moving. died, like some people, even though like the guy had like a heart attack, like Zeus literally crushed the guy at the beginning. The um, um, the uh, I guess it would be uh, Perseus's stepdad, but not real. You know his mm-hmm. the he would. So he basically had a heart attack. He's supposed to be like dead lying on the ground, but mm. his eyes are kind of like still twitching, even though he's supposed to be like crushed into sand and he's laying there. <laughs> oh, and then other people, when they're laying down, like um, after getting stabbed by the scorpion, after they have like a three second hold, like every mm-hmm. half second, their leg will move or something. And I know dead people have this like their that, that, that automatic knee jerk, like reaction, mm-hmm. like, Dead people do move, but I was gonna say, haven't it, you seen The Rock, Paul? <laughs> the uh, leg twitching thing, John. Is, is that normal? Yeah, it happens. Look, is have you not seen Bruce Willis? <laughs> he moved and he was dead. Oh, that's <laughs> spoilers. But <laughs> oh, yes. oh, I'm like, wait, what? In Die Hard, he died. Oh, yes. oh, a different movie. He died so hard. <laughs> <laughs> His body couldn't take it. It was twitching. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So, but that was too much for you, Paul. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. There were several scenes where there were supposed to be people that are dead, but they're still moving. Okay. Kind of takes you out. Yeah. Something else that take took me out, and it's weird because I actually, I kind of enjoy the vintage look of the night for day shots that they had, oh, or yeah. day for night. Excuse me, day for night, where yeah, you yeah, shoot yeah. in the day, but it's for night. Uh, it's supposed yeah. to be a night shot, and it's just but it's a dislike because it's just so blatant it's so blatant this is not at night that you're filming this i mean the scenes in the swamp looked like they're at night that definitely well, they're they're probably in a studio i know well. i know well see here's the thing so i figure out either do it in a studio or figure out a way to actually make it look like it's night because this like you know cloudy afternoon look i like i said it's it's there's something that's that's nostalgic about it for me but if i'm being down if i'm coming down brass tacks it just does not look good it does not look like night i will say that the settings the um the when they were actually on location were amazing some of those mountain ranges and stuff were incredible yeah oh totally well they were on location in like lots of places like italy and Gr- and greece and, and in stuff greece, yeah 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 I was going to say for the night scene, you could always turn your remote settings on the television screen and just turn it darker to make it look like night. Oh, there you that go. Works. Oh, so now it's an interactive movie. Great. That's yes. just yeah. what I'm looking for. And again. it makes the movie longer because you have to pause it. And then... <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, let's get the most of your money. <laughs> okay. Let's get the most of our uh, dislikes with one more from Kevin before we get to our tragic makers. Okay. Uh, for me, it would be the film's pacing. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Sometimes, I mean, I really appreciate all of the effort they put in trying to introduce every character and so forth. Mm -hmm. But there are certain times it really slowed down the pacing. Yes. And I'm a huge fan of a very slow-moving movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love slow-moving movies, but this is more of an action movie. So when you get an action-adventure movie, you don't want it going too slow. Yeah, totally. And there was parts of this that... When I was watching, I was like, how long is this movie again? Mm-hmm. It's like, look, looking back, like, it's nearly two hours long. Yeah. It's only like two minutes away from two hours. I'm thinking, like, there's no way. This movie should have been a lot shorter. Mm-hmm. But other than that, yeah, with that, it was the pacing that didn't really help. That's yeah. because they had to focus on the close-ups and the acting. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like um, yeah, exactly, exactly like that. I, I was going to say when he get first gets to Joppa and he's talking with, um, the oh, penguin. what's his, no, no, wait, is, the, is Burgess married with the penguin? I was thinking yeah, Mickey from this, Rocky. No, but, well, he's both. He's the penguin and from oh 1966. My, really? Batman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's why you said penguin. I didn't realize that was why penguin was in the note, the <laughs> memory mind belt. I didn't know yeah. what was going on. Oh gosh! Oh my goodness! I hadn't. I did not realize that. But and it all comes together. Apparently, yes. But that whole part, I feel like when he's at Jop- Joppa in the theater, that just yeah, that part definitely is a slowdown. Especially right at the start of the movie, I'm like, come on. Uh, but were there any particular scenes you remember being very slow, Kevin? Well, that was one of them. The second one was 
as the gods and goddesses are interacting. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it felt like what they were saying. I know it's very theatrical. Yeah. And Lawrence Oliver, he was a very Shakespearean theatrical person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you have that type, it does take a bit longer for them to say certain things or to project the lines. That way you know by the raising the voice, how they do it and so forth. Mm-hmm. But this is a movie. It's not a, a audience theater. What? Like on stage one. Yeah, it's not on stage theater. This is a movie, so things had to pick up a pacing a little faster. Again, like I said, because it's an action adventure, so it does take a bit more of a edit clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, totally. I, I completely understand. I'm surprised. I, see, something like that would have made my uh, tragic maker list, but it didn't. And I'm curious if it made any of yours. Uh, Paul, what was your tragic maker for this film? Was it the pacing or or no? No, it was actually um, Kevin's other dislike of the um, the um, what he was talking about the black lines because oh yeah yeah what was weirding me out is some of I put compositing because it looked good it actually looked like some scenes actually looked like a guy was fighting a clay monster. Yeah, like they oh, were totally. there in the same yeah, scene. Totally, but yeah. other scenes, there was like you can tell this is like cut and paste, like almost literally cut and glued on together. Yes, yes, and, exactly. And so, um, and it was really distracting to have both. Um, a, 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 for a modern audience, I would think. So that is what really kind of threw me back and forth in and out of the movie was the compositing it's like it worked in some scenes but others it didn't mm-hmm. especially Absolutely. with that scene with calibus um you could tell when he was whipping the horses and then he's back with the people and he's whipping the horses like wait a minute what's happened it looks so cotton yeah exactly what you said just a uh, i you know i the place i noticed it most was when um perseus first gets to oh, i forget the, what the city is but wherever andromeda is Drama. and Joppa. J- is that Joppa too? Okay. So, yes. and you see like the temple in the far background and then a sort of foreground temple. And there's this very black line of where, <laughs> where there's yes. a backdrop and there's the, the stuff that's in actual scene. So, uh, anyway. Uh, okay. So that, those effects that looked very dated, I'd say. Yes. I would say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll um, tell you, especially the, the main scene for me is I didn't even notice as a kid, and maybe that's because it was on the CRT TV, mm-hmm. but when Poseidon is releasing the Kraken, not the close-up shot of him going, oh my gosh, like w- whatever, but it's the far away scene. Like he's in this little corner and it's yes. like a, a little pop out thing. That's why I was talking about how the coloration's way different. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, uh, goodness. Uh, Kevin, what was your tragic maker? The thing you hate most about this film? This movie has a load. I mean, a load of close-up camera shots. Yes. You guys mentioned that earlier. I, For whatever reason, I didn't it's, pick up on this. It's the close-up shots. Uh, yes, thank you, Paul. Because what happened is this director, Desmond Davis, mm-hmm. he was a television director. Exactly. So as a television director... Their television and theatrical are two different ways of filming. Mm-hmm. It's like two different ways of acting, two different ways of editing, and so on. Mm-hmm. But when you're doing a camera shot, anything on television, you had to bring it close so that way the lovely people watching on their tellies could see it, what they're looking at. When you're in theater, you're experiencing it for the massive, and they could have just backed that camera up at least a couple of feet. Not so yeah. close to Paul's face. Yes. <laughs> I'm ready for exactly. my close up now. Yes, <laughs> Mr. DeMille. <laughs> yes. But this, the shots were just so close, and it was like that throughout so many scenes. I'm like, let me appreciate your surroundings. Let me appreciate you being on Pegasus. Let me appreciate you in the city. Don't have so many of the facial up-close shots. And it wasn't like just like the bust. It was right from the neck to the top of the head. Like, good lord, this is so close. See, honestly, I thought that was... Uh, I guess I just... I don't know if I just like... Uh logic's my way out of being concerned with that because i i think i figured that most of that was because they were trying to save money on effect shots and so by having these close-ups on just your live actors you don't have to you can let the people's imagination fill in everything else that's going on around them and that's why all there weren't as many wide shots i would love loved more wide shots totally especially could yeah take in this grand spectacle but I, I mean, that's that's the reason I sort of thought, oh, that's what they're just doing this to hide the fact that they don't have a budget for more effects shots oh, or more time for more effects shots. 
That's a little what? too much of imagination for me. No, my God. <laughs> <laughs> What's also interesting is that if you listen to our Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan episode, Mm -hmm. We did a little mini review of Space Seed, and that was one of the things that you, Francisco, didn't like mm -hmm. was the close-up shots. Yes. But it wasn't just this... close-up. It's with lighting on only the eyes. Everything else is dark. It's almost okay. like a... So it's a, a combo. Like, yeah, it's a combo. So you can have one or the other, not both. <laughs> exactly, yeah. That, okay. That's it. I thought it was making a black and white film. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, before I get to my treasure maker, uh, Dale has one. Uh, Poseidon lay in the crack and... Go looks bad. Yeah, totally. Totally get yes. that. Mm -hmm. um, for me, though, my tragic maker was a little more having to do with uh, the villain's logic, mainly, namely Calibus. Calibus? Calibus' logic? The, the demon-looking guy with the tail and the whip? Satan! The exactly. devil! Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, um, particularly when for what for whatever reason it doesn't it's kind of wonky that they they cut off medusa's head they're sleeping after that i thought that was kind of a cool transition where you see her head and then lightning and it's flashing and you see the, her in the red bag and you sort of know oh her head's in the red bag why it would have been so hard to just put that prosthetic head in a bag i don't know but okay this is how you want to transition it's fine um i don't understand calbus is there okay fine he somehow got there why does he decide to stab a Medusa head, whip the horses away, when all he would have to do is go over to Perseus, stab him in the gut with his trident hand thing? Obviously, he's a heavy sleeper because he can be transported from his island to Joppa and just wake up like, oh, what happened to me? I, I, I'm i just in this other place. Off this guy. Him sneak up on him. No, thought. I'm just saying he's a heavy sleeper. He, he would not have heard that. him. Yes, I did. He that. was transferred from one island no, completely but across Calibus the world. Calibus didn't know that. You it the doesn't that without bath and breaks. It doesn't matter. He's doing all this other stuff that's waking him up. There's no reason. There's no reason for this. He had a ample time to. Uh, what he could have done is go stab, and if that plan goes south, then go stab the Medusa head to get the scorpions. So it's just so frustrating. Like he had the perfect opportunity to like destroy Perseus, well, but oh no, he doesn't think through these things. Some people intentionally make the villains not as smart as um, they should be. He, but this guy's doing riddles all the time to keep yeah. Andromeda to his. He's well, not smart. Not everybody's at your intellectual level, and I understand <laughs> that's very frustrating. So that would ruin a movie for me too. What are you quoting right now? I feel like no. you're quoting something. Everyone I know is stupider than me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wow. he wasn't very smart. He did have a way of, of taking off every god and goddess, except for yeah. his, um, his, his mother. Mom. mother. Yeah. Yeah, except for his mother, because, like, he killed, like, every winged horse. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Who does that? I don't know. It, then it destroys every well. Yeah, you're not a very bright person, are you? <laughs> no, not so much. But, okay. It must have been all that wine he drank. Uh, I guess so. But those were our tragic makers for... Uh, Clash of the Titans. But now that we've entered all our trajectories into the firing computer, Alice, you have a firing solution for us. Firing solution complete. Rating salvo at the ready on your mark. I thought you mentioned about, oh, we'll talk about more about the Kraken later. Yeah, that, that the Kraken was a Norse god. It doesn't even belong in this movie. Oh. I thought That's you what I meant. meant like how like oh how I like to say no no I, I th no no because I was like about that. to say if I saw the behind the scenes like photos with Harry Hausen or however mm -hmm. you pronounce his last name mm -hmm. with the Kraken and those pictures of the Kraken with him look better than the Kraken in the movie <laughs> oh what oh, that's disappointing yeah okay. it's lighting oh my gosh. <laughs> How we got to this far in the episode without that joke is amazing to me. It's time for the moment of truth. Do we rate A Clash of the Titans, a classic? We'd recommend anyone go see this, whether or not they've seen it before, the 1981 version. Uh, do, we rec do we rate it a nostalgic? It's worth watching if you enjoyed it as a kid, maybe, or even as an adult. You, you saw this a while ago, and it's, it'd be worth revisiting again. Or is it a tragic? We'd recommend no one see this. I mean, maybe even it's better to see the 2010 version over this. Who knows? But if you have fond memories, 
don't sully them with a rewatch. And if you've never seen it, definitely don't. So let's start with our guest, Kevin. What is you rate you predicted that Clash of the Times would be a classic? What was your final rating after seeing it? Okay, usually I am not a person to switch. Ooh. When I have something, I am basically 99% confident it's going to stay to remain the same. So tragic. Wow. So that actually, is quite the switch. I was not. This was actually switching no, for me. And okay. I am actually taking this to a nostalgic. Ooh, I was nostalgic. a bit shocked. Okay. I mean, it still has nostalgic value. It still has mm-hmm. nostalgic from my childhood and so forth. Mm-hmm. But after, and I have watched this movie throughout the years, but it was always in bits and clips. It was mm-hmm. never as an entirety. Ah, and okay. And after, and I can see why, because it, with the, the pacing and like, stuff, yeah. And after I watched it, it's like, oh, there was a reason why I only watched bits and clips of this movie. Exactly. Other Much like people things. only watch bits and clips of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. That's, That's right. Because it's not a full movie. It's not a you movie at all. so much. Because <laughs> anyway. they cut it off. Sorry, I, I go ahead, Kevin. I interrupted you. It's only a model. <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, and the coconuts they carry, I had to take it back to an nostalgic. That makes sense. Wonderful. Okay, uh, Paul. <laughs> Paul, you predicted, and I do appreciate your reign, Kevin. Just not the my Python jokes, Paul. Uh, well, you brought it up first, mate. So you know what? The rest of this podcast to the end is now Monty Python jokes. There Take it go. away, Bonancha. <sighs> Paul, you predicted nostalgic. What was your final rating? And now for something completely different. A different rating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I predicted nostalgic, but, and honestly, I like I said, I loved this as a kid. And rewatching it, the nostalgic feelings are firing so strong for me while watching. I really enjoyed it. In fact, so much that I would actually recommend it to anybody. Like, I know there's a a lot of people out there who wouldn't enjoy this. Maybe Mm -hmm. not a lot. There is probably some. But Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it so much that I would recommend it to anybody. Because I love the the adventure and the story behind it and the the great characters and everything. So it's a classic for me. Classic for you. Awesome. Well, for me... I'm actually more in line with the Dapper Man on this one. I predicted what? classic. Why is everybody but... switching? You <laughs> both predicted classic. <laughs> After I had it in my pocket and it's gone. After watching it, I was just, I, I thought it was, it, it'd be fun to revisit. If you do, if you do remember it fondly, you're not going to wreck your memories by rewatching it. It's going to be like a good to a good one to just enjoy again uh, for a little bit. But it's it's I would not like it's not one that I would probably go back to again again uh, like one more time was probably good enough for me I'm not I'd I'd rather watch other I mean I'd rather watch Legend again or other more fantastical oh. movies than this because I think even though it didn't make any Wait. of my dislikes or classic makers because of the pacing it does just take a long time to get through some of these things when you said Legend this time. Mm-hmm. And when you said legend before, when you we were talking about the box office trivia game, yeah, um, you weren't talking about the Will Smith "I Am" legend, are you? No, no, Ridley okay, Scott, that's... Tom Cruise, I'm yes. not Mira Servino. What's her name? Close enough. The, okay, the, Tim Curry. We, we, not, Tim yes, Curry. Tim Curry. But I'm trying to think of the the, the woman in it. But yes, who's um, Ferris Bueller's, Ferris Bueller's girlfriend. girlfriend? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that, um, that one. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but yeah, no, I wasn't talking about I am legend. <laughs> okay. Because he said legend, not I am legend. Exactly. Well, then, I'm uh, careful with my words. Yeah. Are you? Sometimes. Check out your anyway, based on those ratings, the Retro Rewind podcast rates Clash of the Titans, a disputed nostalgic film. If you if you remember liking this film, probably worth a rewatch. But if you've never seen it before, I don't think any of us would recommend the 2010 version. But uh, probably just go check out another sort and sounds like Paul likes Percy Jackson. Maybe check out Percy Jackson or not the uh, movies. Oh, not the Oh, the books, not the movies. Yeah. OK, maybe Maze Runner. Is that way? Is that oh, Percy Jackson? Yeah, but that's that's not that's like not Greek mythology. I Greek thought the whole mythology. Minotaur and stuff was isn't that that's that? not in Maze Runner. No. Oh, just another teenager movie. Go uh, check out Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Anyway. There you go. And uh, go get us a shrubbery. <laughs> uh, now let's get back to go. I'll take a shrubbery. Let's get back to 20XX now. 
Oh good, ah, I can relax because it feels good to be back in 20XX. Uh, but Go we play. wouldn't have been able to travel back to 1981 to begin with if it weren't for our amazing reflux capacitors, namely Jared Holzhauer, Deborah Powers, Brian King, Patrick Hicks, LJ Lowry, Chris Cowan, The Feeling Film Podcast, Chris Owens, Geek Devotions, The Untold Podcast, Mrs. Lomax, James Kennison, Daryl Hafner, Kevin Joshua Burnham, oh, he's right Woo-hoo! here, Woo-hoo! Drew of the Cellcast, Ashley Cronenbitter, Pastor Deuce, and Kenneth, and Redeem Dutaku, Ryan Lingle, and that's our Bobbo, in addition to five other awesome patrons as well. Thank you all so much for keeping the gigawatts coming. And if you want to help keep us flying for as little as $1 a month and get bonus content for your generosity, head over to RetroRewindPodcast.com slash support to help us uh, grow via Patreon or Subscribestar. This stream is sponsored by PaulJPowers.com. <laughs> and while we're thanking our subs- subscribers and supporters and um, people just in general, we also want to give a big uh, fantastic... Kraken hug? A Kraken good hug? There we go. <laughs> a Kraken good hug. Yes! To our subscribers on Twitch, which is another way to send us a couple bucks a month. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can uh, subscribe for free on Twitch. You can find out how at RetroRewindPodcast.com slash Twitch Prime, which the video is probably a little bit outdated. So, you know, you can have fun figuring that out. It's kind of like yeah. a mystery game. Exactly. It's a puzzle. Exactly like that. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but what if you don't have extra cash every month for Twitch or Patreon but still want to support us? You could buy our merch, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. But even better than that is sharing your favorite episode of this podcast with a friend, whether you listen for the banter, the trivial tidbits, or sometimes we have an insight or two. We would love for more people to enjoy Retro Rewind Podcast for the same reason. So please be kind and share Retro Rewind. Release the Kraken! RetroRewindPodcast.com slash 212 is the place to find timestamps for this episode, links to contact us, and links for voting on the movies you want us to review. But that's not the only place you can reach us. Paul, where where else can people find the show and also yourself? PaulJPowers.com. You can find me and the show there. And you know what? If you ever feel up to it, you can feel free to reach out to us and share anything you like that's 15 years old or older, you know, that's cool on our social media. <laughs> we are Retro Rewind Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can join our Discord server. We also got one of those because all the ki- cool kids are doing it. You can go to RetroRewindPodcast.com slash Discord. Also, I've mentioned we are on Twitch. You can watch and chat with us live like these fine folks are doing right now we record podcasts play retro video games and you can follow us you can by following us on twitch.tv slash retro rewind pod and if you want to find me pauljpowers.com stop on by and say hi thank you paul thank you for being a titan of an awesome friend uh, oh so- you're trying to clash with me what oh mixed signals huh <laughs> oh my <Come> gosh <laughs> I'm not Medu- I'm not Medusa over here, um, but yeah, thank you for being my friend, co-host of this show. So appreciate getting to do this podcast with you. Oh, likewise, thank you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm also grateful to our guests for taking time to discuss Clash of the Titans 1981 with us. So the Dapper Man himself, Ke- Kevin Joshua Burnham, please tell us how we can find you online. And is there anything you'd like to promote? Um, it's not Kevin Joshua Burnham. It is Kevin Joshua Burnham. All right. A little uh, uh, role playing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I'm sorry. I just had to do it. Uh, you did you to... Did you have to do it? I don't think you had to do it. Oh, I think I it's in this contract. <laughs> if you wish to find me somewhere on the lovely web, you can check it out on YouTube. I am as the Dapper Man. I'm also on Instagram. Sometimes I make some fantastic memes. Sometimes I just steal from others. <laughs> and if you don't want to see the memes, you can also check me out on Facebook. I'm on facebook.com slash the Dapper Man. Awesome. And if you're in the Jacksonville, Florida location area, you can stop by and say hi to me. I might buy you a beer. I might buy you a coffee. Depends on my mood. Ooh. <laughs> what an invitation. Nice. 
Yeah. yeah. Does he want and to? And we get talk about it? It for hours and hours on movies and the history of Godzilla. Oh, <sighs> rubbing it sweet. in right now. But regardless, thank you so much, Kevin, uh, for being a part of the show. But that's oh, thank not. You. Oh, of course. But that's not all. Mostly, as much as I love Kevin being here and Paul being here, I don't appreciate them as much as I appreciate you. Yes, you listening right now. Percy, Andromeda, uh, Lawrence, Larry, the cable guy, maybe. Um, whether <laughs> or Desmond Davis, he's dead. <sighs> Thanks for that tip. There's other people. Dabber man. That. Whether this is your first time listening to the show, whatever your name is, whether this is your first time listening to the show, or you're part of our Rad Rewinder community, thanks for spending time with us, and we pray you are more joyful now than when you first hit play. I have been and continue to be Francisco Ruiz. Find me on Twitter at FXRetro underscore, and DM me there for Pixel Art Commissions, or alternatively, you can find me on Instagram at FXRUIZX. Finally, we are honored to be part of the Christian Geek Central Network at ChristianGeekCentral.com. You can catch us at CGC or our website, but like a Pokemon, we got to catch you all for 1954's Gojira, our next episode of the Retro Rewind Podcast. Retro Rewind Mission Complete. Proceed to Nap Point Omega and return to base. Release the Kraken! Uh, or we could just release the audience to go on to the next podcast in their podcast queue.